Now, before we get started, I need to warn you that what I'm gonna show you how to compile in this video is code such as this Python keylogger and the script that extracts Wi-Fi passwords stored on a Windows device. Very important warning, do not just download software from the internet and run it because it could be code such as this. I'm hoping that this video is a warning that you can use for yourself, but also for your parents and grandparents perhaps, to show them that they should never just download files from the internet, especially executable files or code that's not signed by a trusted developer. You don't just wanna download code from the internet because you don't know what that code's going to do. In this video, I'm showing you a very simple Python keylogger. Windows will block this code on a computer if you try and run it directly as a Python script. So the antivirus on Windows, Windows 10, Windows 11 as an example will block this code. But once I've compiled it, Windows doesn't recognize the problem and it allows me to run this code without any problems. That's in my tests. Hopefully Microsoft will update the antivirus to block software such as this. But for the moment in my tests, I was able to run this compiled code on a Windows 11 computer that was fully up to date and had antivirus enabled. Another warning, this video is for educational purposes only. Don't use this code for malicious purposes. Don't go out there and break the law and get into trouble. This is to show you the risks of code that's being compiled because malicious code could easily be compiled as an executable. Again, my simple Python scripts are gonna be compiled to run on a Windows 11 computer and they run without a problem in my tests. Now, if you enjoy these types of ethical hacking videos, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and click on the bell to get notifications. That really does help me with the YouTube robots and also means that you don't miss any of the content that I upload. This Windows laptop does not have Python installed. I'm remotely controlling this Windows 11 computer from my Mac, but what I'm demonstrating now is happening on the Windows 11 laptop. So, if I open up a command prompt and type Python, What you'll notice is we take taken to the Windows Store and we asked to get Python. Python is not installed on this Windows computer. What I also want you to see is that antivirus is enabled on this computer. So I haven't disabled real-time protection. I haven't disabled any of the antivirus settings on this Windows computer. So that's fully enabled. I've also got this computer fully updated. So if I check for updates on the Windows computer, you'll see that it's fully up to date. So updated at 3.36 according to this time. And the version of Windows that I'm running is Windows 11 version 21 H2. So latest release at the time of this recording. Now with all of that being said, notice what happens when I run my key logging application. This is the compiled version of my Python code. In this directory, Python exe, I only have two files, but when I double click on that file, a command prompt window displays. This is a very basic key logger, but I could print something out to the screen to tell the person, for instance, that Windows is updating, please continue with your normal tasks and leave this window open, or do something, for example, to hide the window, so that it doesn't appear. But what I want you to see here is a key logs file has been created. So if I go to a website, let's say facebook.com or another website, whatever I type in here, test.test.com and let's set the password to password. Whatever I type there is stored in that key logging file. So notice Facebook and I made a typo. So backspace, backspace, dot com. I pressed enter. Made some more mistakes, so backspace, backspace. Here's my username test at test.com. Press tab, made a few more mistakes, and then I put in my password, which is password in this example. So whatever I type, and let me open up Notepad for this demonstration. Whatever I type here is stored in that key logging application. So my secure password, for example. So scrolling down through that log, 
you can see that I opened up Notepad and then I put in my password and my very secure password is my secure password. That is an example of why you should never just download software and run it on your computer. Again, this Windows computer is up to date. Antivirus is enabled. I haven't disabled any antivirus options within Windows. The software still runs and I'm able to log all the keystrokes on this computer. That's because the Python script has been compiled and is running as compiled code on this computer. What I'll do now is open up a CMD prompt and let's run the second application, Windows 11 Wi-Fi. Press enter and that shows me all the Wi-Fi passwords stored on this Windows computer. Now, both of these scripts are very simple. This is a very basic Python keylogger. The Wi-Fi extract application is actually quite short. This looks long because it has a whole bunch of comments in to try and help you understand what's happening. But basically all it's doing is extracting stored Wi-Fi passwords on this Windows computer. So there's a reason why when you try and download files from the internet, that Windows tries and stops you doing that. There's a very good reason why you shouldn't just download stuff off the internet. In this case, I manually copied the file to the Windows computer using a flash drive or thumb drive such as this, and I was able to run it without any problems. Browsers such as Chrome or Edge will try and stop you downloading files such as these from the internet. Now, in this example, I'm using Nutka to do the compiling of the Python code. Forgive my bad pronunciation, but what I've done to try and make this easier for you is I've created a PDF document, which I've linked below, which shows you all the steps to install the software. So firstly, we have to go to nutka.net as an example. We need to download the software. But to show you the full process of this, I'm running Windows 11 within a virtual machine on my Mac here. It's a brand new installation of Windows 11. The only thing I've installed is Brave because I don't wanna use Edge as my browser. I haven't installed anything else on this Windows computer. Again, this is running as a virtual machine on my Mac, brand new installation. Now, before you install Nutka, you need a specific version of Python. Nutka only supports Python up to 3.9 at the time of this recording. So on the downloads page, on the Nutka website, we can download an MSI file for Python 3.9. So I'll download that software. But before I can actually run that software, I need Python installed. This is a brand new version of Windows, so Python is not installed. So if I go to the python.org website and go to downloads, I can select the version of Python that I want. In my example, I'm gonna download 3.9.9. So I'll scroll down to the end of this page and I'll get the installer for Windows 64-bit. In this example, once again, I'm using Windows 11 within a virtual machine. I downloaded the ISO from Microsoft's website and set up the virtual machine. So I'll install Python. Now, if you've got Python installed already, go to this timestamp to look at the Nutka installation directly rather than Python, but I'll install Python here. And it's very simple installation. And then I'll install the Nutka software. Okay, so I'll disable path length limit in Python and click close. And now I can run the Nutka installation software. Now, notice we get this warning in Windows. As I was saying earlier, you don't just want to install any software on your computer. So if you install anything like this, you install it at your own risk. So Windows has protected your PC, we told, because this is an unrecognized app. I'm gonna click more info and I'm gonna run the installation anyway. And then I'm gonna install it for all users. Click next. Say yes to allow the software to be installed. Okay, software is installed, so I can click finish. And there we go, we've got the software installed. Now again, in the linked PDF, I give you all of those instructions. So I've shown you 
in the video now how to do this installation. But if you prefer following the PDF, you can download that. Once we've installed it, we need to check the version. So in PowerShell, I'm going to type Nutka version, and we can see the version is 399. And the next step now is to get code to compile. You use all the code on my GitHub at your own risk. Again, do not use this for malicious purposes. The code is for educational purposes only. So don't use this for something malicious. But as an example, if I go to github.com forward slash David Bomble. And in this example, I'll go to red Python scripts. And I'm going to download, for instance, this Windows 10 Wi Fi script. I'll click raw. And I'll click save as that's a Python file. So I'm going to click save to save it. So in my downloads directory, I have that Python script. I can open up PowerShell in this directory once again. LS shows me my Python script. And what I can do now is type Python dash M Nutka dash dash MING W64 name of script, which is Windows 10 Wi-Fi PY. We're going to make this a standalone. And we're going to make it one file. Now again, in the documentation, I show you all those steps. So standalone and one file makes it basically an executable file that's independent of the Python installation. So you don't need Python to run the script. This Ming W64 allows you to download the C compiler and also download a C caching tool. We're going to say yes to both of those options. So when I press enter now, the software will be compiled. Now it may take it a while. You just need to wait for the prompts and say yes to both options. So if I say yes, that software is downloaded. I'll just move this up a bit. We've got to say yes once again. And there you go. If I type DOR, you can see the executable file has been created. So there's the file 25 meg. I'll open up a CMD prompt and type Windows 10 Wi Fi EXE. There are no Wi Fi networks on this device because it's a virtual machine. So what I'll do is copy the file from this computer to my Windows 11 computer. So I'll connect the memory stick to my virtual machine. I'll copy that and put it into this directory. Okay, I'll eject the software. So I can take it out of the Mac. And in this example, I'll put it into my Windows computer. So back on my Dell, I'll go to my USB drive, go to the relevant directory. I'll copy that to my downloads directory, open up a CMD prompt, DRR, Windows 10, Wi-Fi, EXE, and there you go. It's run the script. So I've shown you now how to compile a Python script on one Windows computer and then move it to another one and test it. So in this case, I tested it on a physical Windows computer. Now, one thing to be aware of is that if you use this script, the Python key logger script, you need to install additional software. So make sure that you use pip install pineput before you compile your script. So back on my virtual machine, I need to type pip install pineput before I compile the key logging script. So 
back on my GitHub page under repositories. I've got this Python keylogger script. I'll put the link below. I'll copy that. I'll save that as a Python script. Notice the problem here. Windows security finds this as a threat. So if you're gonna compile this code, and this is the problem with any type of hacking type code, Windows is gonna try and block it but you saw that the compiled code wasn't blocked on the Windows 11 laptop. But under virus and threat protection, you're gonna to need to disable real-time protection, otherwise you won't be able to compile the script. So DRR under downloads, my key logging software is there. What I can do now is compile that key logging software. I'll make this a bit bigger. So Python, Nupka, key logging software, standalone one file, and it compiles that software. Just make sure that you install any of the modules that are required to make the software run before you compile it. Okay, so that was a really long video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I showed you, number one, the problem with downloading files from the internet. You shouldn't just download any software from the internet because you don't know if it could be bad code or hacking code such as I demonstrated here. You also should make sure that you enable your antivirus. If you have real-time protection on, it blocks a lot of the malicious code. In this case, I was able to circumvent this. Hopefully, Microsoft will update the antivirus to block this type of thing. When you try and download files from the internet, your browser will also warn you about downloading software. Make sure that both you and your family, for instance, your parents or grandparents are aware about the issues of downloading software from the internet. You don't just wanna download anything because it could be malicious code, could be hacking code. But lastly, notice that key logging software has been compiled and I could run that on my Windows computer.